Hello, this is Jeremy, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about using Bayes' theorem. And I'm going to actually go through using a tree diagram instead of the formula directly, because I find this is much simpler, much more straightforward, and it gives you an easy pattern to remember how to solve these. I'll also talk about how to use a calculator to find these probabilities once you have them, because sometimes it's easy to mess up the order of operations here. Okay, so the way I think about Bayes' theorem is backwards conditional probability. In other words, Normally, you'd expect something like the probability of the second step given the first step, right? That makes sense because the first step happens first, and now what's probably the second? But with Bayes, usually we're looking at what's the probability of this particular first step given that this something else was the second step. So it's kind of strange, and that's what makes it different, and that's why we have a whole different setup for it. Let's look at this question and see how it works into that framework. So we know from a company audit that 4% of department budgets have errors. We make a program and it's supposed to analyze budgets and catch these errors. And in a test, it, it gets the errors 98% of the time. But 5% of the time it says, hey, there's an error, but there's actually not. So there's no th such thing as something perfect that will always find stuff. You can also see this in uh, medical studies, things like that. There's no perfect vaccine. And so that's kind of the idea we see here. We say a budget was marked by the program as having an error. What's the probability it actually does have an error? A lot of people might want to jump and say 98%, but remember that's when there is an error and that's probably all I identify it, but there might not have been an error. So this is backwards because we know the end result. In other words, we know it was flagged as having an error, but we want to know what's probably it does in fact have an error, which it started out having an error, that was the first step, or not, and then it's either flagged or not. So the first step that I do when I see this type of problem that's a uh, backwards conditional essentially, is I go through and I'm, I make a tree diagram of the steps. The first step, the budget was created, it either had an error or it did not have an error. Okay, now after this, it went through the machine, right, it, through the software, and it was either flagged or was not flagged. In other words, I'm calling flag when something says, hey, there's an error here. So it was flagged or not flagged. And now what I'm going to do is fill out the probabilities on here. So the probability of an error, we're going to base it off of the audit and say, well, 4% have an error. So there's a strong chance it doesn't have an error, so that's 0.96. Okay, if it has an error, so now these are conditional. If it has an error, it's supposed to be flagged 98% of the time because it says programs developed to analyze budgets. It identifies error 98% of the time when there are errors. So this would be 0.98. So in other words, this is small. In fact, they'll miss an error if there is one is only 2% chance. Okay, if there's no error, it might still get flagged. It said 5% of those without errors were flagged. And so there's a strong chance it will correctly not flag it. So what Bayes' theorem tells me to do is say, it's kind of similar to the idea of probability in general, of take the big picture on the bottom of the fraction and the small picture on the top. It says, well, how do you get from an error to a flag? Well, to go from an error to a flag would be 0.04. So I kind of look on the tree diagram. This is a very informal way of thinking about it. 0.04 times 0.98. And then it says, well, you know you ended up flagged. What are all the ways you could have gotten there? Well, I could have had an error and be flagged, just like I did. So 0 0.04 times 0.98, essentially an and probability. Or what could have happened? I could have had no error and then gotten flagged. So 0 0.96 times 0.05. Okay. Well, now I got to calculate this out. And so I'm going to use uh, the calculator for this. So we got 0.04 times 0.98 divided by 0.04 times 0.98 plus 0.96 times 0.05. And that comes out to 0.95. Four or five approximately, so approximately a 45% chance. Notice how I put parentheses around the entire denominator. 
So this is to make sure that it divides by the whole denominator, not just by the first part. So the order of operations here is important and the calculator always follows them. So if you don't put parentheses, it's gonna divide first before it adds. Now think about this for a minute. We were told that this identifies errors correctly 98% of the time. But if something's flagged, it actually only has a 45% chance of there really being an error. What's going on here is that the chance of an error is so small to begin with 4% that even though this is highly accurate, even if it identifies a flag and, and flags something, there's still a low chance of there actually being an error because in general, there's just not too many errors. So this actually plays out in all kinds of situations such as very rare diseases. So you could have a test that's 99% accurate and if the disease is very rare, even if you test positive, the chance of having it is pretty small. And it's the same idea. So Bayes' theorem uh, is one of those that really messes with how you think about probability, and it's something worthwhile to research about.